Of course, um, you know, we have in the film industry in Uganda right now, it's slowly growing and, um, you know, coming together. But we have two bodies oh, yeah. that are involved. There's the Media Council, then there's UCC, the Uganda Communications uh, Commission. And, um, you, you know, you wonder what are these two bodies um, exactly doing? What is their role in the film industry? Now, unfortunately, we were unable to get uh, anyone to respond to us from the Media Council. But good enough, we have somebody that came through from UCC. And he is, uh, his name is Ibrahim Bossa, Mr. Ibrahim Bossa. <coughs> and he's the manager, Consumer Affairs. Welcome to Morning at NTV. Thank you very much and a very good morning. Yes. yes, we'd like to know, just help um, the audience understand what, as a manager, Consumer Affairs, what do you do? Manager of Consumer Affairs at the Uganda Communications Commission. Uh, I take on the responsibility for consumer protection, mm -hmm. consumer empowerment, and putting in place a, a flexible, fully fledged complaint handling mechanism. Mm -hmm. We know that as consumers of communication services, things are bound to go wrong, and they do go wrong. Mm. It's a technology, it is an engineering kind of area, but if things do go wrong, we say what kind of redress is available for you. Mm. Is it cost effective? Not everybody can take on an operator, mm -hmm. whether a broadcaster, whether an, uh, a telecom in courts of law, mm -hmm. given the time and costs. So we usually come in to make sure that people are enjoying services. So we have an obligation to promote and also safeguard the interests of consumers. Mm. And that is the area I, I specialize in. Okay. Um, now, you know, for me, when I first came to also be a part, like, you know, to see what UCC does was when they started the Uganda Film Festival. Right. And that showed me that UCC had an interest in the film industry. Right. Um, but that we would want to really understand. I want to understand what is... What is the role that um, UCC plays when it comes to the film industry? I mean, you've seen or you've heard what um, the actors, uh, the filmmakers are making, yeah. the arguments they're making. And mm -hmm. uh, as an actress myself, there's a lot of struggle with, the, you know, support from, from government and, you know, uh, being able to shoot anywhere that mm -hmm. we want to shoot from mm -hmm. and, um, and also all these other different... Um, you know, hiccups. But what I want to know is there are like three bodies. Now, the mm -hmm. Film Commission is mm -hmm. supposed to help bridge the gap between government and the film industry, you know, the filmmakers mm -hmm. bring us together mm -hmm. so that there is that symbiotic, um, flawless relationship True. whereby if we are able to shoot on locations and all that, you're kind of promoting the country and all that. Mm -hmm. The government might benefit from that as well. And also the filmmakers earn from their product. Mm -hmm. But what, what would you say, why, who is catering to what? What does UCC do? Excellent. Media Council, then there is, there is URSB. Absolutely. So what, why can't they all come together and, uh, you know, create the film commission? Or is it UCC that is doing the film commission work? Who does what? Okay. Uh, thank you very much. For the benefits of uh, our viewers, uh, people talked about structure. The guys that uh, at the, at the center down talked about structure. The current structure we have uh, for the film sector mm -hmm. has, of course, uh, the media council that does the censorship and classification of films. Mm -hmm. We have the URSB that uh, basically is handling copyright issues, which are very important when we talk about pr uh, piracy mm -hmm. of movies. Then we have the Uganda Communications Commission that licenses the distribution and exhibition of films. Now, if I restrict myself on the Uganda Communications Commission, uh, the Uganda Communications Act of 2013, Section 37, mm -hmm. empowers us to license cinematography, the exhibition and distribution of films in Uganda. And here we are talking about people basically who are distributing either as, uh, as uh, uh, distributors of films, mm -hmm. basically you're either selling or you're renting. If we're talking about cinemas, if you're talking about video libraries, <coughs> and these have <coughs> different categorizations, these are areas that we take a lot of interest in. Now, it is important for, um, for Uganda to uh, understand that right now, our film industry is still young, it is still nascent. Many of the challenges that have been highlighted, mm. issues of funding, issues of structure, it is true that uh, many other countries that have actually developed in the film uh, industry have actually a film commission and probably one day we expect that Uganda ought and should have a film commission whereby all these issues that we're talking about if it's a question of censorship <laughs> if it's a question of registration mm -hmm. permits licenses could actually be done under one house mm -hmm. it would be a brilliant move 
Otherwise, uh, I can't comment much <coughs> on that because we don't make the laws. Mm -hmm. So we implement the existing laws. Mm. So you will find that uh, in terms of distribution and exhibition of films, Uganda, uh, Uganda Communications Commission has approached the sector. One, we know that it is, it, it, is, it is all over the place. It is a marketplace right now. But over the last uh, four, five years, we have tried to be able to create some sense out of the sector. And first, we have tackled issues of content in terms of the quality of content. The very first Uganda Film Festival, a platform that we put play in place to be able to glamorize film in Uganda. The judges, many of who are international and also very local experts, highlighted the issues of the quality of content, which speaks to the fact that why many uh, Uganda films probably had not been able to penetrate onto the broadcast screen because of content. If you look at people like the pay television, they are critical about content. We needed our films to be able to compete in regional markets in terms of festivals. In over the last four years, we have made strides and bound in that direction. Two, we realized that there was a, an issue of capacity Many people join this sector either because you find yourself unemployed, mm -hmm. you do not actually go to formal uh, education to actually become a, a producer, a writer. So you realize that actually, while we have good stories in the country, mm -hmm. there were issues of the quality, the professionalism, mm -hmm. and that also under the Uganda Film Festival has been tackled head on. And I will tell you that as we speak today, uh, over the last three years, over 50 movies have been able to compete in international film festivals and many have actually even won awards to, talk, to tell you about the improvement in quality. Uh, over the last one year, over 100 Ugandan movies have screened on pay television channels, meaning that now the pay television channels can now appreciate that yes, this is a good quality movie that I can actually uh, sell on my platform across the region. And we have handled this because the Uganda Film Festival, uh, while we're talking about the glamour, of the of the films uh, industry, we undertake workshops for training. Mm. Usually, it is one week. We have master classes. We have beginners classes. We have we tackle even specific areas. Last year, we tackled an area on 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 uh, on, on crowdfunding. How do you get money for your movie using means like social media, being able to have uh, clips on your YouTube and the internet? You know, it's about the marketing. So yes, we have approached that area. So we know that in spite of the challenges that we have, the funding, people probably do not have equipment. But we have demonstrated that you actually don't need to own equipment to make a movie. Mm -hmm. What we have done as, uh, under the Uganda Film Festival platform is to bring different stakeholders together. Academia, people know, where can I go to study, to, to be able to learn a skill, either to write, to produce, mm -hmm. or to act, and so on. We have brought people who own equipment, mm. so that people know who, who, who has what in the market. Where can I rent equipment, okay? Some equipment is uh, professional equipment, some equipment is geocally, but mm. actually delivering a good product. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, had all these people come on board. We have brought on, on place media buyers, people to come uh, uh, under the film festival and mm. see what is available, who is doing what, at what quality. Even these media buyers begin to advise these guys on what they're interested in, so that producers and actors actually can be able to produce films targeting a particular market. Mm. So yes, in terms of film distribution mm. and marketing, we have actually done some work. Mm -hmm. We feel that we are making progress. Mm. The issues that are being raised are real issues, and I think that uh, well, that it is still a long journey, and different stakeholders need to be able to pull together. There's something to hold on to right now, mm. as we speak. Okay, that that is quite interesting that you mentioned. Um, I just want to understand you. So you actually, as UCC, you are also putting together workshops to train people. Absolutely. Are you, uh, do, are you doing that? Yes. What we are, what we did as uh, a commission is to have a platform that can actually promote and encourage networking mm -hmm. and, um, uh, and, and uh, exposure to our local films. Mm. And as a package, that package has one workshops, which are usually workshops that take uh, a week long. But you see this, these are usually uh, to tease somebody, to show you what you need to, to have, what you need to do. And usually we do it in partnership mm. with a number of uh, film schools around. Mm, so it's so like you know an intensive workshop. It's an you intensive workshop. You learn a lot in a short time. Absolutely. But you know that after that, you can actually go and earn an actual qualification, if you wanted to, from the existing 
schools that we partner with because they do exist. Mm. Then we also encourage under that platform cinema going. The cinema going culture in Uganda mm -hmm. is still very low. I'll tell you that many of the major cinemas mm. are struggling and probably before the Uganda Film Festival you could hardly see a Ugandan movie screening in a premium cinema in Uganda here. Mm. As we speak today some Ugandan movies are making their launches, their pre premieres in the movies. So what we have done under the Uganda Film Festival is to have a week long of Ugandan movies screening in premium uh, cinemas who are partnering with the Uganda Film Festival and we encourage the public to go and watch these films free of charge. What we're saying, have the cinema experience. Mm. If you're there one time, two times, and you like it, mm. and you enjoy it, mm. probably the next time a film is being premiered, next time a film is being marketed, a family would go and watch mm. a Ugandan movie. Mm -hmm. So we actually do that. Mm. We also have a film market under the Uganda Film Festival. A film ma market is an exhibition. An exhibition that brings together everybody who has a stake mm. in film mm. to showcase what they have, what they can do. Okay. Okay, thank you, Ibrahim. And uh, we actually have Philip Luswata online. He is an actor, producer, director. Some of you may remember him from Igoli back in the day, and he's also been in Makutano Junction in Kenya. And he's also on a couple of projects right here in Uganda. He's one of, uh, he used to be on Center for. Was it Center for? Center for uh, a medical show that we used to air in Uganda back in the day. I was a huge fan, still am. Uh, so Philip Luswata uh, will also interact with us and we see what he thinks about the film commission. Uh, Philip Luswata, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, how are you this morning? I'm very good, Cleo. How are you? We're good. Okay, so I would like you to tell us, what do you think uh, can be improved in the film industry? What are the challenges we are facing as filmmakers and what would you want to see improved? Well, I, I think as a filmmaker, one of the th biggest things that I've seen is the idea of not being understood. You know, you hear right now, um, government is really excited about the film industry, they, are, they have put all these different organizations that are supposed to look into it, but then we do not understand them, they do not understand us. Up to now, you find there is very little funding for training. Mm. So you want to regulate an industry, it, it, it's like uh, asking your baby to start paying rent in your house. <laughs> yeah? be, be, because now you have started crawling, you better start paying rent. Instead of saying, let me nurture this child up to the point where I am able to earn the most out of them. So we have all these things that are coming to kind of step on our head. You find the media council is telling you you can't do this. This one is telling you you can't do that. This mm. one is telling you ah, I want to do this for you. But they're not telling you how do I want you to make money? Mm. How do I want you to be effective? How do I want you to, you know, to be contributive to the, uh, the industry? They want you to tell them. This is how we are going to contribute, not them to tell you. So I, I, I think we're not being understood. And even when you hear the president saying, oh, we shouldn't invest in art, we should uh, put more into the sciences and what. So we are having people <laughs> mm. who, yeah, I think that the big thing is government needs to work towards understanding the industry first before mm. getting excited by what they are seeing. Mm. If you see many films are being created, down, are being stored and sold downtown, then you get excited that yeah, that's a very good big revenue source. But you know, most of these staff who are making these films downtown, are make, they are making these films at losses. So we are in an industry of hobby, really. Mm. So we're not making that big money, but there's this excitement that we are, which is the bigger problem, yeah. Okay. So Philip... Um, I, I have uh, Ibrahim from UCC. What is that one call you'd tell him? What, what is it that you'd want UCC to do for the film industry? Well, I know UCC is a big budget organization, and that's one of the biggest things we are proud of. Hmm. Um, like now, when they do this festival that they do, which usually costs uh, upwards of a billion or something, if this kind of money is put and it put out to, you know, these small filmmakers and tell them, maybe they make this fund so that it uh, loans, they loan the filmmakers. Instead of saying we are going to give the, the best filmmaker 10 million, loan the best filmmaker 10 million to pay back, but be able to make money. You know, even when you look at <coughs> 2040 of the NRM government, 
we shall be employing to youth, uh, contributing to youth employment in a big way because one film is going to employ on minimum usually a hundred people. Now you imagine those are a hundred thieves of the <laughs> of the street, <laughs> and instead of now investing in these uh, trucks, what, what are they riot trucks? You are investing in dogs. You are investing in the uh, tear gas. You invest in people communicating, people talking to each other, people expressing themselves. Hmm. And so that's how you create a developing nation. So out there, UCC really needs to come out stronger, other than just sitting and watching and waiting uh, for the festival, because that's the big thing now we know. To say, uh -uh, we are putting this tier. Now we want you to proactively come out and start working, hmm. make films and this is possible for you. Okay. Okay, thank you, Philip. Um, what do you have to say about what, his, uh, what Philip Excellent. is talking Excellent. I think Philip about. makes uh, a very genuine and uh, a real concern, especially um, them wanting to be known, uh, the government understanding what they are actually mm -hmm. doing. And I would want to tell Philip that actually the government has made straights in trying to know and understand the film sector. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you some of the th issues that have been uh, taken in that direction. We have encouraged the many different film actors, the small associations, to actually have an umbrella association that can be able to speak to the government with one voice. Mm. Even when you want to give support, you want to give assistance, if you look at a clutter of a market, the question is who do you support and on what? You need uh, an umbrella organization that can prioritize issues that are biting in the sector and say, for this year, we would like the government to help us on an area of one and two. Next year, you come and say, let us help us in an area of three. Because we have done this in other sectors like broadcasting, yeah. where broadcasters have the National Association of Broadcasters, and it is a very powerful, very effective lobbying platform for broadcasters. And we are looking in that light that also the film should be able to have an umbrella organization that can work with government. Mm. We actually assisted the film sector to come up with what they think call a Uganda Film Council. Mm -hmm. The name can be questionable, but yes, they do have what we call a Uganda Film Council. We did participate and facilitated the engagement that set up this Uganda Film Council. We supported in helping them to them coming up with their, with their terms and conditions, their charter and things of the kind. Mm -hmm. But what, it's now two years <coughs> down the road, but you still get a feeling that people want to be individualistic especially in this sector. Mm -hmm. People still don't believe in an umbrella association. People want to be themselves privately. And you find that is difficult could, for could, the government. Do you think that is a problem because most of these filmmakers feel there is no film person representing? Uh, from observation, mm. from observation, the, uh, if you looked at our uh, film sector, we have found that the film sector initially had two kind of groupings. There are those people who used to call themselves the up market. There are those people who used to call themselves the down market. And for some reason, the two never used to be able to meet. So you find that sometimes you're undertaking an engagement and you only have representation from one, side. one side. Where one side is, another mm. does not appear. Mm. And that seems to be a challenge. Mm. But I think for any industry that is growing, mm -hmm. that is inevitable. That's why we together. felt mm. that as the Uganda Communications Commission, we could offer a neutral approach and therefore be able to have a platform that can bring people together. When we do the film festival, if it's an exhibition, if it's the award gala, if it is training, it is for everybody who is participating in the sector and we're doing it free of charge. Mm. So there's no discrimination. Okay. So we're hoping that in that, somehow the sector should be able to learn, to be able to work together mm. and be able to lobby in one voice. Okay. Thank you, Bossa. The, you, you, uh, we are still with Ibrahim Bossa. He is the manager consumer affairs at UCC and uh, down at National Theatre with Andrew Chamagero. We do have the, you know, the filmmakers that have questions for you. And uh, Andrew, can you hear me? Okay. So um, another, w before I get to Andrew, I just want to 
ask you a question, mm -hmm. another question. Mm -hmm. Why is there, why does it seem, um, I know you've tried to explain that, you know, the, the bodies are trying to come together and they, you made you UFC that was probably trying to also do, it's, it, it just feels like there are too many mm -hmm. bodies mm -hmm. and, and, and as, a, as, as somebody in the film industry, mm -hmm. you get confused mm -hmm. on who is doing what. Mm -hmm. But before, okay, let's take a question from Andrew and we'll get back to that. Andrew? <laughs> Well, thank you, Cleopatra. This conversation is good. Mm -hmm. Kwanzaa, I want to commend everyone following the hashtag on Twitter. I saw Alexander John on Twitter. Thanks for the good job. And I mm -hmm. saw Marvin and the smiling crane. Um, is it the smiling crane on Twitter? The conversation is good. We have a couple of questions from the practitioners, the producers are back here for Ibra. Mr. Ibrahim Bosa. Mm. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. My question is this. You say you give us a platform during Uganda Film Festival, 50 movies plus and whatnot, and then you, you air, I mean, you, you screen mm. these films on, in, in different cinema halls, right? Now, tell me how I have a boss and I'm supposed to show up at work mm. at 7.30 or 8, mm. and you tell me to go and watch a movie. I'm not going to lie that we have a lot of supporters. There's so many people that actually want to watch our films. But they tell you, eh, man, 10, I'm at work. Mm. And you cannot tell someone to leave work and mm. risk getting fired mm. to go and watch a film mm. during the Uganda Film Festival. Mm. You yourself, you do not watch these movies. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. You see officials, you show up at the opening and then you show up at the, at the closing, at the awarding gala, which, by the way, is a very nice one. It's brilliant. It's a spectacle mm -hmm. but what about everything that leads towards the mm -hmm. spectacle mm -hmm. let us work on that before you actually give us a spectacle because everyone is looking at the uganda film festival and thinking wow this is huge i was in mombasa mm -hmm. for the coast film festival and everyone was thinking you guys have a really huge festival and i don't even have two or three movies to mm. actually say, you know what, these ones after they went from the film festival, they went here. Mm. So I would like to see a lot more of that growth. Th mm. Rather than us sitting down and saying, but we give you, we give you. No, mm. we are not seeing it. Okay. Um, uh, Ibra, if you could respond to that mm -hmm. before I bring in the others. Yes. Well, Excellent. Well, you know, they're very passionate. Absolutely. Filmmakers are passionate. So I, no, I, what, and what's I your believe response? them. Mm. And uh, I, I can actually associate with what she's trying to say. Mm. Usually you would want to feel the impact of what is being done in the sector on yourself. Mm. If, if it's you're an actor on my movie, which is true. Um, you realize that our engagement in film, I think, started around about 2013. Yes. It has been a mountain, I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. It has been a mountain, <laughs> and you realize that, yes, uh, the, 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 we are taking baby steps, but we know that they are solid baby steps. Mm -hmm. I would like to let her know that uh, over the last couple of years, we grew the number of people who are actually watching movies under the Uganda Film Festivals, the movies that are circulated in the cinemas, from 2,500 for the first Uganda Film Festival mm -hmm. to over 6,000 last year. Mm -hmm. So meaning that probably we are beginning to reach out and people are beginning to notice. Mm -hmm. Usually this takes some time. Mm -hmm. You know that awareness is always big budget and mm -hmm. we always try to attract as many partners to be able to have the word out there. Mm -hmm. If you look at the appeal, uh, last year I actually, I think was the second time I was personally watching the Uganda movies. So I like the comment she's making. Mm -hmm. But I was wowed. I was amazed. Yes. I could not believe that Uganda had the quality of movies mm -hmm. like The Devil's Chest. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So even people like me who probably were not watching Ugandan movies mm -hmm. now believe in Ugandan movies. I can talk <laughs> and sell a Ugandan movie because I can now believe in the quality. I can now believe in the storyline. I can now believe in the professionalism that has emerged mm -hmm. as a result of this. Mm -hmm. So I get the take home from her that we need to be doing more. Mm -hmm. Two, we need to be able to consult the stakeholders on how best we are driving the sector. And that is a very good uh, resounding message that we can take home as a Uganda Communications Commission. Okay. Um, Ibrahim, if I go back to Andrew, um, you, you, Pamela made up another good point. The screening times, because I was one of those victims. I wanted to watch the Ugandan films, but the screening times were very unfriendly. Mm -hmm. uh, very early in the morning, 10 a.m., 9 a.m., mm -hmm. you know, midday. How better are you going to, you know, improve that with the screening times at the cinemas? How, how would you plan to make uh, it The there? fact that it is made as a comment... Uh, first maybe let me tell our viewers why yes it okay. was like that mm -hmm. 
the screen times that are irregular mm -hmm. was because that our partners were giving us that screening time free of charge. Mm -hmm. The screening time that happens in the evening, which is premium time for these mm -hmm. cinemas, that's the time they also make money, we needed to pay for it. You get it? So probably what they're saying, mm -hmm. yes, we need to be able to either lobby our partners mm -hmm. or probably even find better budgets to be able to have the movies screening within the <coughs> premium time. So that <coughs> makes a very good point. But we also know that you realize that the Uganda Film Festival happens during the time when students are on holiday. Mm -hmm. So we know usually that during the day, the majority of the people are not going to be the working class, but probably are the youth, mm -hmm. probably who are unemployed mm -hmm. or who are on holiday. And we have always done the evening corporate screenings mm. for those guys who are from the office. And you realize that even the setup is a little different yes. from what is happening during the day and mm -hmm. what is happening in the in evening. The evening. Mm -hmm. So progress there, but also the, the point is taken home. So slowly the time will increase to a Absolutely. better time. This okay, so thank you so much, Ibrahim Bossa. He's the manager of consumer affairs at UCC. And we're discussing the film council, how they can help improve the film industry. And as an actress, I will be very happy if this is made easier for us to create content, to put out stuff there, to produce and direct with much more uh, co you know, cooperation from the government bodies and uh, UCC itself. And uh, we're going to be coming back after this short break uh, we'll be having Mala talking to another wonderful filmmaker. Her name is Nana Kaga. And of course, also going back to Andrew Chamagero, who's on ground at the National Theatre, speaking with filmmakers too. So don't go anywhere. You're watching at, you know, you're watching Morning at NTV and you can use the hashtag Morning at NTV to participate in our discussion.